Hello, hello. Cool. Back and running. All good. I think the sound's good. I think video's good. So yeah, welcome back to another virtual production live stream where we're sharing all the cool things that are going on in the world of virtual production and off-world live. Uh, we do these streams every week and just share cool tips on things that open up, cool possibilities for creative stuff within Unreal Engine and the virtual production kind of world. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at End Display. Uh, really cool plugin from Unreal Engine uh, that lets you render out uh, many viewports uh, instead of just one viewport. You're not kind of limited to your screen space. You can render out a single Unreal Engine scene to uh, many different computers on the same network. Hey there, Finitor. Nice to see you in here. Um, I'm just gonna mute you for a sec because I'm just gonna do uh, starting starting off. Just gonna run through this end display stuff and then open to open to questions after that for sure. Um, so yeah, if you're not familiar with what Unreal Engine's end display plugin is, uh, you can check this documentation. Um, but essentially, it's a way to render out multiple viewports. Um, so you can split split different faces into viewports. They use it for things like the big Mandalorian uh, LED screens. Um, look up things like LED caves. Uh, this is often kind of um, how they do it. They kind of split these different sections into different parts of the LED screen. Um, one second, one second. Cool. Yeah, just double checking the stream was public. <laughs> um, so yeah, it is used in this kind of like a virtual production setting. You know, you can kind of see the different screens there, um, and it just means that you can you can have one machine that's doing all the uh, heavy lifting of like the Unreal Engine stuff, and then uh, that can be sending out to multiple other uh, machines that can render um, yeah sections of very large kind of end display setups or LED setups. Um, so it's used in this like uh, big virtual production kind of set setting and it's awesome for that but you can also use it for um, lots of other stuff really especially if you've got like a small LED cave system um, doesn't have to be a large studio or anything like that but I just thought I'd mention this uh, tutorial that we've got here which I can link in the description um, so where I figured out this way to use end display to make these kind of uh, anamorphic uh, billboard setups. Oh, it's a different, different video actually. So anamorphic billboards being these kind of billboards where you get a sense of 3D because it's kind of uh, from a certain viewpoint. Um, so I will just mention this tutorial because it's quite it's quite cool because it is a bit of a start to finish of how to make a kind of anamorphic billboard. But because it's in Unreal Engine, it means that you can um, do like a live playable anamorphic billboard. So you could just be playing a kind of game uh, and then send out the kind of mapping uh, using a display to send all this stuff out in real time. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> uh, you get this kind of corner and then you get a real sense of depth even in a non kind of 3D screen. So yeah, check that check that one out if you want to get, get a kind of basis in end display, but here I am just going to do a bit of a start to finish on rendering from end display because you can actually take these different screens um, you've got in this kind of uh, through loads of stuff. Okay, so these kind of screens, each of these different screens, you can render these out individually, and that makes um, for some quite cool flexibility. You can uh, uh, stitch these together and get bigger renders, kind of like a tiling system, or you can um, uh, use it to do kind of projection mapping or LED cave kind of mapping. So I'm just going to start from top with this. So 
Omega 5.2 project. Uh, end display does go through to 5.3, but um, it's only a couple, only a couple uh, caveats with it. Hey, nice to see you, Wit Sellers. Thanks for dropping in. Yeah, we're doing end display this week. Um, yeah, 5.3 is a little bit buggy for it, so I think to be safe, 5.2 seems to not have too many problems. Um, we go film, video, and live events, and make an endless label project here. Just going to save it somewhere useful. Call it something like that. So creating the project from this end display uh, template is really cool because you get all the right plugins enabled and um, you do get a few uh, a few custom configs and stuff to play with. I think it's always really useful to work with these configs that you've already sort of been given because you know it's kind of mostly set up right. You know, you don't have to do it all super by hand. Let me know if you've got any questions while this is going on. I'll keep an eye on the chat as well. But yeah, so when you jump into this level, it's already set up with these end display configs. And the idea here is that you've got a screen and you've got a viewpoint. And if you double click on this, you can actually change this. And you can see that like as you get really, really close, it's, uh, it's skewing it based off this projection point. So this will look, it will look right from here. Then as you come over here, the flat image is going to be skewed. And this is really useful for things like projection mapping or LED cave kind of mapping where you have like one intended one intended viewpoint and you want to make like a 3D kind of illusion or something. So yeah, this can just be sent out to projectors and stuff in a more DIY setting as well. So yeah, you've got that. Um, you've got example configs and you've got all of these, which are really useful. You've even got a curved wall example. So, you know, that kind of shows how you can get all of these kind of faces together to make a bit of a curved wall. You can do a more perfectly curved wall, which I've done a tutorial on in the past as well. Um, it's a bit tricky to unwrap, but yeah, you can do it. Um, so you've also got things like cave. So it's quite a traditional kind of cave that you'd see. It's got a little bit of ceiling, a little bit of floor, a little bit of left and right. And again, you know, you are free to kind of move this default viewpoint around. You might sort of not want people touching the floor of your cave, so you might want the viewpoint to be here. And you can also uh, change this viewpoint uh, in blueprints on the fly. So while this stuff's running, you could in real time have um, different points that it might snap to. So yeah, yeah. Let's let's use like let's use this cave. Um, yeah, let's use this cave in a setting. Mm, and so yeah, at the moment this is all writing to separate viewports, which you can tell by these different coloured boxes. And each of these viewports is a different um, host, so it's a different computer. And you can see here it's got IP addresses. So what you can do is you can like uh, use what's called switchboard to like trigger this whole thing, run the one scene in Unreal Engine, like run run one off of one computer, run editor, and then you can launch these viewports, which will be each of these faces on a computer each. So these are each different computer, different IP address, different computer. So that means like uh, you would get super nice fast rendering off of the one computer that's doing the heavy lifting of the Unreal Engine scene and then just purely from a visuals point of view each of these computers can be rendering a whole you know um, I don't know what resolution that is but it's bigger than 1920 bigger than by 1080 you know a bit of an arbitrary resolution there but. so if you can see how that f how, it, how it kind of networks different computers together and frees you up sort of rendering wise 
but you can also use this for offline renders to get a lot of resolution out of a render. So let's do that now. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually make a new config from scratch. These are really useful and they they are they are good, but uh, for me I want to run it all off of one computer instead of doing the whole network thing because I'm just doing offline rendering instead of real time stuff. So to make an end of flow config, you got here if you got the plugins enabled. Do just a new one. We could call this endlessly config underscore. Uh, let's call it like I don't know. Large screen. And it automatically gives you a screen, default viewpoint, and a root. But it doesn't give you anything down here. So I'll show you how to make all this stuff. So what we're doing is basically telling this screen to sort of write to a viewport. So you can do add new cluster node. Hey, nice to see you guys in here. Feel free to ask any questions throughout, but we're just running through end display and how to uh, use, you can use the fact that this can render really high res images to actually make almost kind of tiled, tiled images of whatever resolution you want. You know, you can render really high res stuff with this. It's just like a kind of funny use of end display to get really high res stuff out. Uh, and then also in terms of rendering your viewports, if you're doing this in a more traditional LED screen kind of sense, you might want to pre-render your footage. You might not want to be dealing with real time. You might just want a pre-rendered um, pre scene. Hey Hamden, nice to see you. Yeah, so yeah, adding a new cluster node, this is like the computer, and that's why it's got an IP address. Um, you can uh, put in your actual IP address here instead of this one, but it can also launch on this uh, kind of, whatever this, whatever this address is, it can launch here. So, full screen we won't enable because we're just going to make our windows to be full screen anyway. Um, so let's make the whole size of this um, something quite big. Let's times, times this by three. <clears throat> so ridiculous resolution there. What's that? About 6K. Keep that. And you know, you can do like tiled renders like this, but I'm just going to show you like how. Uh, and display can let you do this stuff. Um, yeah, cool. So the whole window is going to be that size. I'm not going to look at any of this stuff at the moment. Um, actually, just yeah, don't really need to pay attention to that at the moment. Cool. So we've got this one viewport here around 6K. I'd like to start out doing VP in your studio in Birmingham. Nice. Shout out UK. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of our videos, confused where to start. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a good question, where to start. Uh, depends what kind of studio you're making, I guess. Um, you're looking at uh, doing an LED wall kind of setup, or you're looking at green screening people in. Uh, Chatting to us on the phone about getting the right product. Um, I would say ask in the Discord uh, to start off. Um, we can definitely advise on some good people to talk to. I mean, in terms of like camera tracking products and stuff like that, I'm not I'm not really the best. Uh, Hamden in here is pretty good. Uh, see if he's got any advice. But just as a start, I would start just asking questions in the Discord, and um, we can definitely set up like a chat or a. Uh, potentially a phone call sometime on that, but I would I would start in the Discord and just see if anyone can help you with, uh, yeah, like put out like an equipment question or something. That could be really cool. Oh, nice. We got loads of different countries here. Hello, hello, Jacob in Denmark. Really cool. So yeah, um, in terms of this end display stuff, what's cool about this? I've got a uh, ridiculously big screen. I could actually go, I was testing this earlier on, and I can go to um, 
whatever resolution. I was doing something ridiculous like um, 10, 10k square. And, you know, if I was to do that as a tiled render um, through Movie Render Queue, it would just crash. But if you set up the tiles yourself in this, then you can actually get you can actually get the the each tile as long as it's big enough for your GPU. Um, yeah, you can actually it's actually a good way to get around some crashes. But also just as a base kind of base kind of thing, showing how to render out of Movie Render Queue using Endisplay is quite a cool thing. It's actually really really simple. Um, so. Yeah, what I'll do here is just so we have this this overall overall screen size. Um, it's got the size up here as well. Yeah, downloading the VP Studio project. Yep, definitely also worth jumping in and downloading that. Um, I will say it's like, uh, especially if you're just starting out, it can be. Um, I would say just jump straight to the, I think it's called like podcast uh, template level or one of the other kind of finished levels. You should be able to just change the spout input or change the media input and see something in action. But um, again, can be quite confusing if you're just starting out. But hopefully as you get to learn more things that are going on or how things work, you might um, get find some really useful stuff in there. It's like it's aiming to have some kind of finished levels for you that uh, you can just hook your media into. But yeah, please do jump in the Discord as well. Awesome. Thanks for the kind words. So, yeah, so we've got these three layers kind of thing now. And um, so you've got the hosts. That's if you were to launch many computers, you would have many hosts, as I mentioned earlier. You've got the node, which is kind of a container for your... Um, viewports, it's also the same resolution. Uh, this is kind of, the node is kind of like what you launch if you're to launch uh, a screen as like a little standalone game. Um, and then within the node you've got a viewport and this is the kind of the, the size that you can set, kind of arbitrary size that you can set. So I'm pretty confident that I can do one render of like, you know, 2000 by 3000 pixels. So we could do just half of this resolution, just split it into two screens. Um, but we'll have to do this uh, uh, over, over here as well. We're going to have to make two screens for it. So I can just copy and paste one of these. Uh, and let's make them uh, sort of 50-50 kind of resolution. So 50 by 100. Is that is that two one or is that something else? Yeah, absolutely. Discord is a good place to start. Also, um, uh, v uh, VP Facebook groups, you know, virtual production and Unreal Facebook groups, really cool. So what I'm doing here is pretty arbitrary. If you want like uh, real pixel for pixel um, stuff, you need to get the measurements of your LED screen and just get you know the exact sizes of your LED screen. Um, but yeah, what I've got here. Da, da, da. Let's look at like what the actual size is for what eight should we try an 8k seven thousand mm, yeah it's fine I just don't want to have to split it up into too many viewports just for this demo so let's do let's do 6k Oh, so it's 6,000 by 3,000. Cool. So I'm just going to change the host resolution here. Um, allow manual sizing. Cool. 
Cool, and that's brought that in a bit. You then then do need to re resize the node here. I didn't know 6k was just a round number of 6,000 by 3,000. It's quite funny. Uh, and it's, it can sometimes be a bit funny here, but you can kind of move this one arbitrarily as well. So in this one, nice and easy, we can do um, uh, 6,000 by 50, sorry, 3,000 by 1,500. Oh, and this size is worth double checking. I think it might have just, it's a little bit buggy with its like resizing. Oh, that's because I've got this lock on. Not a bug, a feature. Nice, unlock that. Six, seven, compile, save. And this one, where's the size gone for this? You can definitely just, uh, yeah numerically add this in which is nice and easy. So let's do 3000 by 3000 and my GPU should have no problems with this. Um, uh, I have done a couple steps to get the most out of my GPU which I could go into in a bit uh, and then it's also based on RAM as well so how much how much RAM you have. You can find out what your limit is on your RAM uh, and then uh, so say I've got uh, nine gig um, of it's not it's not nine gig of RAM, but it's nine gig of space. There's like a certain number which exactly relates to how many pixels you can get out of one of these renders. For me, three K squared is totally safe. Um, let's double check what the biggest renders I was getting. I've just got thirty seventy Ti, so fairly at these days, fairly middle of the run kind of. GPU, um, but I was getting I was getting 8K regular renders out, uh, and then I was rendering rendering 4K by 4K, uh, and then splitting that off. So I was getting like a 16K image by doing six 4Ks by 4Ks. Is that right? So 24,000 pixels image. So what is that unheard of resolution? <laughs> but yeah, um, you can look into like what the max you can do with your GPU is, or you can just do it, play it by ear. Just try a 3K and see if it works. So yes, we got that. These need to be square now. Just changing what my changing what my format is on the fly, which end display is really nice for. you're not too tied into one shape or size, which is nice. And the VP, the viewport, I can just copy and paste that as well. Again, slight bugginess makes me not want to do this all the time, but let's see if it works. That's also 3K square. And then what we've just got to set is this view origin. Uh, hold on, projection, simple. This can be based on a custom mesh. Don't really know what some of these do, but I'll keep it simple and then you can just select your screen. You can see the screens kind of turn on. So there you go. So now you're like saying, this one is doing this one, this one is doing this one. And that's all sweet. Yeah, if you've got the game developer background, you should be able to pick at it pretty happily. It'll be watermarked if you don't have a um, license for Offworld. You can get a non-commercial license if you're testing or if you're not planning on making money off of what you're making. Um, but the watermark's not too, um, you know, it's not too in the way anyway. Initially with virtual cameras, then retrack a bit less further down the line. Yeah, it's a good way to go. Yeah, the, the project at the moment is like currently based around Composure, which is Unreal's way to get nicer, cleaner media um, in. But it is a really over-the-top way. It's just an over-the-top over the top workflow that can be a bit over-complicated. Um, but at the moment, it's kind of what you have to use if you want to get really nice uh, talent into Unreal Engine. So it should help you get going with Composure. We've also got loads of tutorials on Composure. 
So yeah, the yeah the end display setup is really really nice, and it, it's nice for visual people like me, where um, you you know you don't have to do loads of typing in, and you can literally just kind of play with it and sort of see what different setups will look like. You know, with the kind of grid snapping on as well, it's like really nice and quick. You know, you can start to like build build a cave or something. You know, and then you know I'll just uh, create another node, decide where I want to put it. Maybe I'd want to downsize all of these or I'd want to make a whole new machine to render to render this on so it's really flexible really cool I'm not going to go into the whole switchboard side of things but it's actually also it's a bit fiddly I don't really like wireless connections and sort of relying on them even down to like printers I don't really get on with printers so like switchboard launching things across the network is, is always a bit bit fiddly it can be like why is this not working but um, in general it's not too bad to get your head around switchboard it's just kind of launching launching these as a standalone little Unreal Engine instance but yeah we're just gonna do offline rendering for now so I'm just gonna show you how I should be able to get both of these out without much problem without much issue yes yeah, so custom meshes are supported as well so when I was here and you do this projection type simple, uh, you can also say mesh. So you say I was just to add in a custom mesh. Can you do just static mesh? Yeah. So static mesh, um, I guess it would probably have to be a plane. So plane here. Make it like a random size. Will it do that? Maybe. Uh, and then let's use this one. You can go instead of simple, you can go mesh. Then you can go static mesh. And yeah, it's gonna very nicely project that onto that random shape I just dropped in, you know. Uh, and then you get that real time skewing based on where the viewpoint is, so you don't have to mess around with UV unwrapping and things like that. On the pricing, thanks for that. Yeah, we're we're always we've got um, a lot of people looking at pricing and how um, how to do it fairly, how to do it competitively and fairly, and um, it's definitely just aiming to be a bit more um, democratized with it. You know. <coughs> so yeah, that's how you do <coughs> that's how you do custom mesh. But um, uh, let's go back and make this sim simple screen one and yeah it just pops into view no seams really nice so then we can like drop this in a level to get rid of this one uh, large screen and you can just size this up you can just move the viewpoint do what you want for your particular level but none of these changes are going to go to the actual screen here. It's all just based on this instance of the blueprint. And then we could do something like make a level sequence. Uh, and you can literally just use this as a way to get to the movie render queue settings. Um, you don't have to track this or anything. But you can track it for things like movement. So you can just make this like fully fly around. So if you've got like a cave kind of scenario, you could do something cool like uh, lifting, lifting off the ground or something. You know, um, it won't show up in this because it's sort of uh, in game view, not visible. So if you press G, you've got game view. So you can. What I quite like to do is make a camera. So you, I, you might get some some job where it's like they want a whole video. Uh, but it's mapped to multiple projectors or screens in in a venue. Um, so what you can do is like just make a camera, uh, like a cine camera. Drop that in, um, and let's uh, let's delete the rotation stuff for this. Make it a bit smaller, like that. Makes a bit more sense. And then like pilot, pilot this camera. 
put it like in line with your default viewpoint so you know that it's going to be viewed from the same place I'll take the focal length up a bit because you kind of got the whole view of the screen it makes a bit more sense so this camera can just be serve as your guide of like where you're looking around in your scene but when it actually is written to your LED screens or your projection mapping policy um, you're going to have this big field of view anyway because it could be a whole cave or something so you can track this camera uh, and then you can just jump out of that and you can make this um, a child so you can see the viewpoint and the camera are pretty well lined up you can get more exact with that if you wanted you know that this is seeing what this is seeing uh, and then and then in our outliner you could just uh, parent parent this to your camera and then you know any moves that your camera is doing you're going to get the end display config as well and this can be um, however many faces this could be a whole set of cube faces it could be a ceiling and a floor as well and you just get you know your nice kind of regular transform tracking so you know I could then like move up like this track that fly back down here um, add things like roll if you want and, you know get a really nice dynamic shot do whatever you want um, and that's all going to carry through you know the camera is like a nice first uh, indicator of where you're kind of moving cinematically but that is all going to carry through to your end display config so then you could get you could do really cool stuff like making people fall through a cave or spin around you know if you've got like a a floor in your projection or led screen kind of setting you can you can just bring out that floor make people fall down it do really amazing stuff like that not necessarily what you'd want to do but it's just cool to know that that's possible you know a lot of people use end display just for backgrounds as well so yeah as I say you don't actually need to track the end display config in here to do your kind of uh, render out of the faces but yeah this is the really key bit but it's really really simple uh, as you go into movie render queue um, you can make you can make and save a config if you want but in your kind of config settings if you've got end display enabled you can actually just click it here and then uh, find your end display config you can say use viewport resolution so this is how you get uh, this is how you get uh, really big resolutions you know and then you can do this render all viewports so this you can turn off and you can say just render viewport 0 or viewport 1 this time and then next time uh, say like first time just render viewport 0 render that one out second time just render viewport 1 and then you can go much bigger than your GPU would normally allow by breaking it up into these kind of tiles uh, I think I'm going to be able to do both in this because it's only what was it just under 6k or something I oh, know it was 6k resolution I think I can handle that so um, as long as I've got that selected you do also need to go here and go to end display rendering you can see you've also got end display path tracer so that's quite cool you can do path trace renders uh, and then you've got like other end display passes if you want to I can do regular end display rendering don't need to touch any of this either but obviously you can if you want to I think this warp blend it's not the viewpoint thing, it's something different, but I'm going to leave it on. You can do JPEGs. I haven't tested EXRs yet. It could be worth testing. Uh, and then you can also just make this resolution really small because uh, we don't even want this final output. Um, I'm not even going to, it's going to render out the normal image from the Cinecam's point of view and then also the end display viewport image. Um, so we don't, yeah, I don't need a massive, uh, massive image here, so this can actually save some resources. You can save a directory. Yep. 
hip setup folder. You can do more stuff with this, uh, like naming conventions, if you want to. You can find that on the docs. Uh, and then with use viewport resolutions, render all viewports, uh, and the screen selected, uh, we should be able to get to go. Uh, let's open this up so I can find it. I can go render local. See how this goes with me streaming and stuff at the same time. <laughs> if I drop off, you know, you know why. <laughs> but I think I think it should be able to. Do it. <clears throat> yeah, even if I do drop off at this point, those are literally all the steps you need to uh, render out these end display viewports and. Having pre, you know, having pre-rendered stuff <coughs> in with this perfect like projection policy that the the viewpoint gives you and these nice skewed images, really really cool. It means you don't have to do any UV unwrapping to make your images skewed and stuff, and uh, can make some really cool kind of installations or um, uh, v VP related backgrounds, whether it's LED screens or projections. You've then got these nice skewed images that you can. Uh, you can play at the same time. Oh, didn't actually hit render. Cool, I'm gonna be back two seconds while this renders. I said to do 150 frames, but it's it's plowing through that, and that's very quick, isn't it? Let's see. That's worryingly quick. <laughs> Let's see if it's actually doing what I want it to do. I just want a couple frames to look at. So, do, 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 stream test, what have we got? So cool, that I'm seeing these, these square images, both sides of the same image, that's a really good sign. They're 3K each, and we've got the overall image, which is the low res, uh, just front camera image, it's just, it just renders one of those anyway, so I just thought, you know, keep it low res, we're not gonna, really going to want it. But yeah, now what you can do is stitch those back together. You know, there's no super automated way to do this at the moment, sadly. Um, but yeah, we've essentially got this like heinously big image. It's just rendered it out pretty quickly. Not much worry of whether I'm going to crash. You know, I'm streaming at the same time as doing this, just on a 3070 Ti. And it's just because it's rendering out just 3K images at a time, you know. So, in Photoshop I can do something like make a 6K image. Uh, just drag my left and my right onto that. There's probably more clever ways you could sort of organize these using that kind of naming convention and sort of make a more automated way to stitch these together. But I'm just going to show you that there's like uh, it's just quite a nice image. Oh. Okay, this is why this previs is useful. Because that is not lined up. <laughs> oh, it would be different frames. Different frames. So that was, that was frame one from here, surely. Yeah, so. Frame one here. I forgot I had movement. There we go. Seamless. Fully seamless. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Don't know why there's a white line here. Is that the shader? Maybe that's just this bevel. Yeah. Really nice seamless image at 6K. No stress of no stress of crashes or anything like that. Um, this is obviously really cool as well for if you've got a mad kind of mapped projection. Uh, 
thing going on. Um, so you've got one of these like caves instead. Cave unwrap. Uh, and you know it's really really useful to have the kind of skewed skewed images to give that sense of depth as you're kind of looking into it. Um, if you want to save those images out, you know you can use this kind of render render thing. Uh, stitch those images back together or play them on separate separate computers. Um, yeah, and that's kind of that's the rendering side. It is literally as simple as that to actually get this render out. It's just adding those passes in the movie render queue settings, um, end display rendering, and end display. And uh, yeah, gonna look at this a bit more. I'm gonna see if we can get EXRs out of it as well. But um, yeah, really useful stuff. Let me know if you got any questions around this. But um, yeah, really wanted to share that because it's just quite exciting. Just looking at getting really ridiculously high res images out of Unreal using it. Yeah, great to see so many of you in here this week as well. It's really cool. Um, I know it's um, not masses, but it's really nice to just share this stuff with people. And you know, VP crew is a tight knit community anyway, so <laughs> it's really yeah, great to see, great to see people interested. Um, do jump in the Discord and let us know if there's other things you want to look at. Um, any ideas? Any things you're wanting to know more about? Um, and yeah, either way, we're just going to be sharing tips, sharing tips every week, and just hanging out. You can also join in the Discord and uh, jump in on the voice channel if you want to chat about something in this period. We tend to do it every Thursday from three three o'clock UK time. And um, yeah, I hope that's useful. Gonna chill here for a little bit till the stream catches up. Walkthrough of driving LEDs with DMX. No, no, I haven't really stepped into the DMX side. Um, could be cool to look into, uh, but it's, it's a whole world of research that I haven't really started on, to be honest. Um, I guess DMX is just a protocol for driving changes in your scene. Um, so I have done some MIDI stuff last week which is obviously just another way that uh, machines can kind of, we can get you can get an input from real life uh, dials and sliders and then use that to drive stuff in Unreal Engine I guess DMX is just another protocol for taking in those values and um, then assigning them but yeah, give me a cool one Maybe we'll get. Maybe we'll try and find someone who can get on and talk about that a bit more. Because I know there's some people in the Discord and stuff that are real pros in that. Um, as I say, like, not super. I haven't looked at it at all yet, but yeah, it could be a cool one. Yeah, thanks, Hamden, again. Um, and I see you in here. Let us know if you make anything cool with end display. You know, it's. I think knowing some stuff about this and knowing how to do like the. Um, anamorphic sort of corner corner illusion you know if you're like looking at looking at it from this corner it looks really 3d even in real life um, it's actually got some got some interest and it can open up open up some cool some cool gigs you know from clients yeah thanks for your thanks for your input everyone I'm gonna jump off now but yeah catch us next week if you wanna, don't know what we're gonna talk about yet, but we'll announce it at some point. And um, yeah, thanks a lot for your input.